Welcome again to Wizards and Wordsmiths. I'm Jim Zub, the Dungeon Master for this uh, fine group of authors that I'm taking on a strange culinary adventure. I'll let them introduce themselves and then we'll get right to it. Hi, I'm Kevin Hearn, and I am playing a hill dwarf condiment sommelier named Keggy Gruntled, and he has a badger familiar named Mr. Tickles, who just successfully taunted a malevolent mushroom. And so I give Mr. Tickles, uh, you know, a lot of praise, plus a little dried fish ball with uh, some dark and stormy mustard on there, made with <laughs> and ginger. Very good, very good. Uh, I'm Adib Koram, and I play Jeno, the Sub-Zero Sorcerer, who may not pay too much attention to his aim. <laughs> I'm Andrea Robertson. I am Tilly, the Gnome Rogue. I'm Sherielle Smith, and this is my first D&D game. And Ooh. I am Ula, the Elf uh, Pastry Chef, who has darkest chocolate and darker secrets. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm David Yoon, and I'll be playing the Dragonborn cleric, Barba Chaos, who's still looking for an animal to roast. <laughs> <laughs> no animals yet. You're like, we got mushrooms, we got yeah, all these things. I'll okay. get my barbecue on, man. So last question, uh, you guys took down uh, the evil of a malevolent mushroom, a uh, humongous fungus. Um, <laughs> thanks to uh, the help of a hunter dwarf named bric a -brac. Was it thanks to any of his help, though? Bric-a-brac. Yeah. Yeah. He pointed in the right yeah. direction. <laughs> so bric a is uh, quite pleased with himself, and he knows his strategy was perfect all the way, did everything you needed to do. You, we did a great job, all of us. You all did exactly what you needed to do. I set him up for you. You knocked him down. That's the way that good teamwork happens. <laughs> I'm very proud of all of us, especially me. Oh. So he goes and he takes out his big axe and he just starts sort of cutting sections of the mushroom, the now felled mushroom. He hits the frozen bits that uh, uh, Jeno created and he sort of struggles a little bit with it. And he goes, have you got time for some soup? Or must you be on your way? Uh, Jeno finally pops out of hiding <laughs> and says... Wait, what happened to all the fireflies in their mouth? <laughs> he goes, it's fireflies. I didn't see any fly in fire at all. Hmm. Yeah, Jeno uses mage hand to like pry the mouth of the mushroom open. Okay, so you pry the mushroom open. Only with mage hand. He's not approaching the mushroom because he finds mushrooms disgusting. Because <laughs> of the gills. Because <laughs> of the gills. Which I also find disgusting, but <laughs> he stands at a distance and uses mage hand. Okay. To, like, Pry the mouth you open. Pull it open. You don't so see there's it. an invisible magical hand that just goes. Yeah. He just goes, oh, it's still alive. Ah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Who are you? That's that's not important right now. What happened to the fireflies? <laughs> I didn't I didn't see any flying fire. He's with us. And I always wanted to get 10,000 hugs from 10,000 lightning bugs. I've heard it's a very pleasant experience. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> don't even worry about don't worry about it okay. um jenno gets a little closer to see if the, the fireflies have just vanished out of the mouth okay so you look you don't see any fireflies in there hmm. oh this is really strange did they okay point of order did they so just they, did we address where they went and they, i was like having a they flew <laughs> away they they escaped and they flew okay away. i just like completely <laughs> blocked them right now. No, you were too fixated on those hugs <laughs> I was who, who, who hug? okay. offers to give jenno a hug no, would okay. you like would you like a hug? I th I think that'd be really nice. This has been a really hard day. <laughs> okay. Ula, Ula embraces him and he hears something whispering in his ear and it's disturbing. Okay. She lets him go. Um <laughs> Jeno makes I want to make a sleight of hand check. Mm -hmm. Uh Jeno's gonna try to pick her pockets if she has any chocolate on her. Oh. 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 All right. That's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> um sleight of hand. So make a uh, perception oh. roll there, uh, Shiri. Uh, make a perception roll, okay. Yeah, there's going to be an opposed roll, so whoever gets higher. Okay. Jeno rolled a 19. Ooh. 
And Ula rolled a 23. Take that, oh, sticky oh, fingers. Yeah, no, so you, get, you do get a piece of chocolate, but she's... Okay, so, Cherie, you're aware of it. So you can either do something about it or let him take it. Um, I need to know if it is white chocolate or dark chocolate. It is dark chocolate. Dark chocolate, I say to him, you're welcome to try it, but it might cost you. Uh, Jenna says... Can I, can I take out a loan? We're supposed to get paid for this, right? Huh? <laughs> I don't mean it. A little freaked out by this, <laughs> and he's young, and his taste buds haven't developed, and he really just wanted like some milk chocolate type situation, you know, something a little yeah. sweeter. So this he puts is a it little back. strong for you. He puts it back, awesome. uh, but you do hear an audible growl from his stomach, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you hear a hiss from somewhere around her. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Jeno, Jeno blushes and says, sorry. Smart uh, kid. <laughs> so uh, can, can I make a perception check? Because my badger, I saw Mr. Tickles over there. He, yeah. he, uh, his ears perked up when that hiss happened. That's true. And I'm, okay. I'm a little worried about what might be going on there. All right, feel free to make a perception roll. Okay. 21! So you didn't notice it before, but Cherie's character, Ula, when she's talking sometimes or when she's interacting with you, there's little hushed kind of whispers behind it. There's little extra sounds. They're easy to miss. But now that you know to listen for it, there's something something else there. You're not quite sure. Hmm. Uh, Ula, is there anybody there beside you? <laughs> in, in... Uh, nobody but me and my shadow. Your your shadow. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, my shadows. Your shadows. Ah, oh, are they the friendly sort? Unfortunately, only one of them is friendly. Oh no. Do we need to be worried about them? <laughs> no. Keep your hands off my white chocolate, and I can keep it in check. All righty then, I will do that. Print it now. I think everybody heard that. No, <laughs> no touching the white chocolate. No touching the white chocolate. All right. So um, basically, uh, uh, Bric a Brac is sort of like, you tell him that you guys wanted to go to the Mocha Mountain. And he's like, well, I can lead you there. We can have soup first and then we go. Or are you in a bit of a rush? I, I would like some soup, please. I'm feeling peckish. All right. So also, he, uh, wasn't the soup supposed to have special properties? It's supposed to help keep us strong and full. Strong. <laughs> so he uh, uh, takes this big chunk of mushroom and he's chopping it into smaller pieces. He gets a cauldron of water going and then he starts to uh, make up a, a mushroom soup. Now, you guys are all chefs here. So if you want to try and improve it, particularly Tealy with your... Uh, herbs and spices, feel free to uh, to roll. All right. I uh, would Barbie like Chaos, if you want to to bring, uh, yeah, although this isn't a meat per se, you could give it definitely a heartier flavor. I was what, actually what? thinking of improving it with meat. All right. <laughs> you can try and do so. So how do I roll to find meat around here? So you're going to make a survival roll for like a hunting check to try and trap something small. Okay, come on. Okay. What, should I, what should I roll for my seasonings? So for your seasonings, let's say the highest you've got between either Arcana or Insight or Medicine. Okay. Actually, Nature as well. I, whichever one's highest. I rolled an eight. Hmm. Oh, no. The only thing you're able to see around here, unfortunately, is a badger. <laughs> yeah, and we love the badger. Yeah, so we're uh, not going to mess with the badger. And your companions. A 10? Yes. Okay. A, so tofu you're roll. able to, yeah, you're able to bring a little bit of extra flavor to it. Nothing too crazy, but uh, this is a pretty basic soup. You guys as cooks are like, oh, this guy's an amateur. You know, he just make, he just makes food to eat. He's not trying no, to right here. Anybody. I sprinkle a little bit of my heartening heather into this. Nice. <laughs> he just looks up and he goes... I mean, is it not okay? <laughs> I've been making this for a long time there, look. 
Uh, I mean, no, it is okay. It's exactly okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, great. That's great to hear. So he uh, gets out a bowl and he starts uh, uh, slurping away at it. You guys uh, take a drink as well. His um, his bragging about its strength and everything else was pretty much just a just a description. Like that's just his. There's no magical properties. He's not a he's not a magical cook like you guys. You know, it doesn't taste bad, but uh, your highly developed palate has definitely had better. I would I would like to state for the record that Geno does not eat the disgusting mushroom <laughs> because he hates mushrooms. I think it's why he was trying to get some chocolate. Nice. I'm still stuck on the fairies. I mean, come on. What happened with those guys? What did it mean? All right. Uh, Ula calls out in Eladrin in her language, in the language of the fairies, um, to check on them and see if they are okay. What do you say? <laughs> brethren, brethren, now that you are free, come and talk to me. Are you all right? Can you tell us what brought you to this plight? Nice. She... Uh says that out loud and the words they don't just come out of our mouth they seem to echo even off into the forest a little bit Hi, further. Hi. <laughs> and then you start to see a little point of light appear on the surface of the grass and you hear a voice kind of this tinny little show voice comes above and it says Ulantra, Ulantra, you should not have come here you know what you bring. You know the danger. Why? Why again? Why now? I, I, I carry white chocolate to keep it in check. Is there enough? Will there ever be enough? WTF. There will never be enough, and I know ultimately it will cost my soul. But for now, that's the way I roll. <laughs> <laughs> there are some pretty intense rhyming drama going on right there. Oh, Aladrin, what can I tell you? Wait, is that fee language? So we don't understand it. If we say, like, did we get yeah. any of that? It's, you know, a, it's an elvish language. Yeah, you would. If you know elvish, you would understand. So, uh -huh. Jeno does speak elvish. Ah. Um. And he's a little freaked out right now. <laughs> um, and so his eyes are just going wider and wider, and he pushes his glasses up the bridge of his nose. Okay. Um, so you and just like, oh. just scoots, scoots, booty scoots a, a few inches further away from Ula. <laughs> Fair enough. A little cheek walk, um, and Ula says to the to the um, Fey folk, um, uh, "Can you, uh, you know, we will only be out here a short while if we can recover the recipe for the pie divine. Um, if you can aid us on our quest, I promise to keep in check what is mine. Your quest, your quest." We will try, but we cannot stay. We must fly. So they uh, they head out over the grasses. Bric-a-brac's like, are, are you not finishing the soup then? <laughs> uh, but the they are, the, you see these little points of light? They're in sort of a little bit of a trail, and they seem to be pointing to go a very specific direction. We should follow um, the trail. Friends, we should follow the light. Can I make another uh, sleight of hand check? What are you going to do? Uh, Jenna's going to cast Frostbite on the, the pot of soup. So be like, oh, the soup's cold. We got to go now. Bye. Nice. To get them out, of, to get them no. out without any more awkward I'll, conversation. I'll out of you. A chance, uh, sleight of hand check on it. Because I was going to say his soup was mediocre. <laughs> That's her. Oh, well, now the die, the shadow of the die is just hovering over the screen. Cool. Oh, no. Behave. Reload. <laughs> Let's refresh the page. Reload. What? Did the die fly off D and D Beyond? No, literally, a shadow appeared and then just paused. Weird. Oh. It does say it's still in beta. Uh, <laughs> Jenna rolled a twenty-three. Ah, so you perfectly, uh, surreptitiously, no one else in the group even knows, and you go, "Oh, the soup's gone cold. We're out of here." And he's yeah. just, like, oh. "Yep, yeah. yeah. have a good day. Bye." And Jenna just starts following the trail. All right. So you guys head off. 
leaving Thank Rick, you, Rick Brack Brack. to wonder why his soup has gone so cold so fast. <laughs> As you follow the uh, fae fo the little firefly fae folk, and you move through the woods, you realize that the path that they've chosen is unreal. The tree branches are not in your way anymore. And if anything, you have moments where you wonder if they're actually moving out of your way. The rocks always catch your foot solidly beneath you. The leaves give off this calming kind of wave and as the wind blows through them. It's, a, it's almost meditative as you move quicker than you could have imagined, speeding your way through the rest of the savory swamp. Until there, where the branches suddenly open up, you see before you the Mocha Mountain, topped with meringue. <gasps> and at the bottom... I love meringue! <laughs> dark, dark, set in front of you. And so we return. Is this still nighttime or has it dawned yet? There's just that pre-dawn kind of light on the horizon, but still very dark inside. Is the sun behind the mountain or behind, behind us? Okay. Are you going to take a selfie? <laughs> um, if we just stay here until the sun rises, it's going to shine really beautifully off of that meringue. <laughs> <laughs> Is gonna Hashtag like, no filter. Is this, will the sun coach the meringue? No filter. Is it gonna crack? No like, is it gonna get too hot and then cool unevenly and crack? Like, there's a lot of questions involved about the meringue right now. Yeah. This is why Benno works in ice. <laughs> uh, I could counter that with my fire. But that mushroom, True. hey, that mushroom was we worth can cross it. Cross the guess. streams and make water. Right. Yeah. Cross the streams. <laughs> so cross can the we streams do and make for... water. Oh, right. That sounds like a bathroom <laughs> check. Can we, action. <laughs> can we do a perception check to see if we see any trace of the of the salt? Yeah. Yes. Salt skeletons. Yes. So let's see. Rolling perception. And twelve. Twenty-two to me. I rolled a seventeen. Okay, you can definitely see little hints. Of uh, uh, of sea salt amongst the chocolate trail. All right. Is the Mocha Mountain actually made out of coffee flavored chocolate? You gonna take a closer look? Sure. All right. So you step forward. It's not actually made of chocolate, but it, the surface and the texture and the color feels so richly like it. It feels like stone, however. It feels like stone. Okay. Um, Geno starts following the trail of salt. Okay. And he says, hey, I found some salt. <laughs> All right. Uh, Let's go. You're leading the charge again, Geno? Uh, I, I think, I feel like leading is a generous term. He is, <laughs> he is um, not necessarily paying attention that so you're in front, uh, you're what not anyone else is doing. He's very singular, yeah. single-minded on the reward involved in returning the recipe. So leading merely by inertia and not necessarily by design. Indeed. Got it. Okay. So you're having... Sure, I don't know if anyone's ever seen a young person who just charges into the street without looking both ways, but that's completely Geno. On the moon. <laughs> All right. All the time. So following up then, I believe, is Peggy, then Barbara Chaos, Ula, and Teal. Mr. Tickle right. right alongside. He's uh, having a good old time going through the Mocha Mountain, uh, the footing is much better here than the, the savory. Yeah. You guys head into the cave, and the, the, uh, it is extremely dark, even with your dark vision. So dark vision operates on the idea of ambient light, and it is extremely, extremely low. And so you're all straining to see a little bit more. Every step that you make echoes off the stone surfaces and the walls, and so it's a little bit hard to tell which are your footsteps or your coughs or your shudders or your badgery growls <laughs> and which are just the sounds and the creaking within the stone itself or deeper somewhere within this mountain. As you round another bend, you hear low rumbles, a very similar rumble 
to what you heard back in the fest hall? Uh, would anyone object to me pulling out my hooded lantern? Or do we want to stay in the dark dark? How many of us have dark vision? Like, how many of us can see? We all do, but he said it's even hard to dark. dark. Right. Okay. Um, Je Jeno says, I was just going to have him breathe. And he points at, uh, he points at Barbie Chaos. Barbie, yes. And he says, but the lantern sounds a lot smarter. Let's do that. <laughs> okay. So you light the lantern and it gives off this soft glow, casts all sorts of creepy soft shadows etching up the walls. Ooh. And that rumble again, that low rumble that you heard before the salt struck back in the fest hall. So this rumble before, it's just like the time before when it was like a, a, a precursor to a seismic event. Lo oh, so then the voice sort of carries over and you hear, Lady of Quelandriel. Oh, no. Uh, Lady of Quelandriel. Sorry, guys, that's me. <laughs> such, such temptations you brought long ago. Such things you took. And so uh, you do. What did you do? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Hey, Ula, what's going on? <laughs> full, full confession time, guys. Um, um, Shadows of the Mountain. I pulled a thing of popcorn out of his pockets. <laughs> um, so, as you know, I am a pastry chef, and I um, try to bring unique sweetness to life. I, I have, I confess, I've been to Mocha Mountain once before on a quest for um, the legendary confection known as darkest chocolate. Darkest chocolate. <laughs> lit, 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 lit. None darker. <laughs> None darker, and it is um, so bitter. Say it's a controlled <laughs> substance, uh -huh. and it is bitter. It is the darkest substance, um, and I have paid for it. Um, my companion, my second shadow, um, is a darkness that has attached itself to me. Um, mm -hmm. I have paid for this chocolate with my soul. And I am keeping this shadow in check with white chocolate. Uh -huh. But I have with me pockets full of white chocolate. I can control my shadow. I do not know if it will work on the entire mountain. Um, I suppose my other option is to return the brick of darkest chocolate that I currently have. Um, it's far too late for that. <laughs> Dang. You had a chance long ago. Your bright chocolate has no place here. Oh, no. And Don't knock until you've tried it. <laughs> my guardians, you hear a little creaking noise, a little cracking sound, a little snapping sound. Why don't you say hello to my ginger snaps? Make an initiative roll. What's that for? Well, I do like the ginger snaps a great deal, though. <laughs> Have you One ever had chocolate cookies. dip ginger snaps? Like, we could <laughs> work with this. I rolled a 16. All right. 14 okay. here. Sorry? 14. 14. Nice. 12. 12. Nine. <laughs> David, I don't think you've had an initiative above nine. I think no, that's your initiative. I haven't. At least it's more than eight. It's true, Jack. I got a six this time. Six? Oh my gosh. I know, right? Jenna is clearly very alarmed by the oh, Yeah, creeped out by this. So what you see, the monsters are at the top of the order. You see these thin, stick-like kind of uh, 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 creatures, but they're like evil, thin gingerbread men. Okay. Kind of humanoid with long, sharp limbs. And when they move, they crackle and they snap with their limbs as they shamble towards you in order to keep track of them because there are multiples last time we used the beatles this time we'll use led zeppelin so we've got uh jimmy robert john and john paul all right so uh the ginger snaps are moving quickly skittering along the floor and then they leap up 
and try and uh, stab at you with their strange gingerbreaded limbs. Uh, two of them are moving in on uh, Ula. What's your AC? I'm sorry? What's your armor AC? class. Um, where would I find that? Oh, I just found uh, it. Oh, I'm 13. 13. I was just about to say. 13. Good stuff. All right. So one of them misses, but as you sort of step to one side to avoid it, uh -huh. you move right into the other one. Don't okay. Stabs at you for five damage. Oh, no. oh son of a gun. Okay. Mm -hmm. Five damage. All right. So she is Mighty boys. quite hurt. What's your current hit point total? Three. All right. Three so more hits than you might be on a stairway. <laughs> yep. All right. So moving right along, we've got, um, so that was uh, Jimmy and Robert who just attacked you. Okay. Then uh, John is going to attack Barba Chaos and miss. So it sort of snaps out at you rapidly. You and suck, then, John. And then John Paul will uh, attempt to strike at Keggy and roll a natural 20. Oh, oh, no. so <laughs> oh, the drama. Oh, so you take six damage. Hmm. Uh, brought this on all of us. I feel so bad. I love the chaos. All right. So now, Ula, you're at the top of the player order. What are you going to do? So what's the layout? Who's around me? So there are two uh, ginger snaps that are attacking at you from either side. Uh, okay. For ease of use, we're calling them Jimmy and Robert. Um, I have a question about cantrips. Sure. Um, do I, can I do one per turn? You or? can. Yeah, okay. as a first level character, you're not able to cast more than one. All right. In that in that case, um, you know, you guys are going to hate me for it. Um, but I'm going to shout out, hold on, I'm going to do Thunder Wave. It's my last <laughs> Thunder Wave. <laughs> it's my go-to. It's my go-to. I'm going to crouch close to the ground. Okay. Like I'm not close I'm enough. rolling well, it. And... If, we all, if we all jump at the same time, will that help? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I'll tell you the way. So it works on anything within 15 feet, uh, a 15 cubic foot originating from me. Yep. So um, you want to hit the two nearest to you? Yeah. The so they get pushed two. back 10 feet. They should. Right. Okay. And what do they have to roll to save? Anything? Um. Sorry. I, I did 10 damage. 10 damage. Nice. Oh. Very oh nice. Gosh. All right. So uh, you crack their cookie surfaces, but they are not quite destroyed, but they are very, very angry at you, clicking and snapping. <laughs> They're so snappish, these guys. They are snappish. They're snapping at you. All right, Keggy, you have just been struck deep by one of these, and it is clicking in your ears. That one is John Paul. Do these ginger snaps have susceptibility to dairy? They may just be soggified. Yeah. Uh, as part of my condiments, I do have a creamy dill sauce. <laughs> Uh, a yogurt. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a yogurt based. So can I grab that jar and dump it on his head? Yes, you can. All right, I'll dump yogurt deal sauce on John Paul's head. I love it. Uh, roll your attack with advantage. <laughs> yogurt. Yogurt. Heed. <laughs> I hate yogurt, even with strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got seven and three, so the creamy yogurt heel sauce is not all that effective against ginger. So you told her with seven? Uh, yeah, the seven was the good roll. Oh my God. So you bring, what the problem is, is you bring the yogurt out and you realize that it started to separate and you're like, well, I can't use this until I stir it up. And so you're stirring it up and you stir it up and you use your whole turn just stirring the damn thing. You don't even get a chance to dollop it at all. I should, I should have asked, you know, Jenna to refrigerate it. It would have kept together better, but, then, you know, it, hindsight's 2020. Right? I wish I could roll a 20. It's <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, well. Teely, it's your attack. What's your attack there, Andrea? Oh, I'm going to try throwing a dagger. Okay. So you pull out a dagger. Okay, I would like to throw it at Robert. Down, okay. Mr. Plant. Down with you. <laughs> I, I rolled a 10. 10. Uh, 10 is basically, it brings up one of its cookie arms and just knocks the dagger aside. Oh, and, oh no! Nicking and snapping at you the whole way. Barba Chaos. I'm going to have to breathe on him. Damn right. Oh, wait. Is is Ula too close to him? Am, am I going to hit Well, you uh, can hit me. So, it's possible you might catch her if you roll really terrible. But this is my fault. Do do what you need to do, Barbara. Right, I want to hit. You have like three hit points. I could kill you. It's the uh, yeah. it wouldn't, wouldn't be the worst thing that could happen to me today. My yeah. soul is in jeopardy. I'm lawful good. I don't. Ah, uh, wait. And there's there's still four standing. There are all four still standing. I gotta Ooh, do it unharmed. I gotta do it. Here we go. All right. So you're just unleashing this fiery breath on it. Yeah, Blah. and it's 11 dexterity save. Okay, so uh, all four of them are going to roll. Ula is in the midst, and Keggy's going could get burned as well. So make your dex checks. Dex check? Okay. 10. 10 is a, is a fail. Oh. Sorry. Sheree? 13. 13. Yes, 13. You would dance out of the way of them. Yeah. Uh, let's do damage. So John, Paul, Jimmy, and John are getting hit with it. What? Well, oh, I didn't get out of the way because I'm shielding Mr. Tickles. That's right. <laughs> You're a hero. I got a seven. Seven damage. Yeah. Nice. It's above average. All right. So uh, John, John, Paul, and Jimmy... So Jimmy was already hurt from before, and when the fire hits it, he just crisps right up and the surface burns, and then it just crumbles apart. <laughs> so am I taking sugar? And then how much, you're also, so you failed your deck save, right? So you're also taking seven. Ouch, that's smart. I'm gonna heal you, <laughs> I promise. So how, well, how many hit points do you have now, Keggy? I've got four. Oh. Four and Ooh, three. a beefy boy. <laughs> see. Thankful for that uh, blessed beer now, that's for sure. All right, so next in the order is Jeno. Uh, so did the yogurt get... The yogurt has not been dolloped yet. But did it get cooked, or is it, like, good now? No, I mean, he he actually was trying to hold it up, and so it's still there. Okay. And it, it, how big of a jar is it? Is it fairly, like... Oh, it's like a small mustard okay. jar. Jeno is going to use Mage Hand to grab the jar and smash it into the nearest uh, ginger snap. I like it. All right, give me a... a no dolloping here. We're going to smash the whole thing. I like it. So um, it flies out of your hands, Keggy. Uh, make a roll with an advantage. All right. Uh, Jeno. Ah, yeah. Okay. Boom. Oh, I have to click it and then hit roll. There we are. <laughs> uh, I got it. The... I don't know. Oh, uh, I got an 18. Oh, nice. So your high is an 18. You definitely hit. Nice, so this nice. dill yogurt strikes the surface of this. Uh, which which uh, ginger snap are you trying to hit? One that's already wounded, I assume? Uh, whichever one Keggy was. Keggy, you were aiming for John, right? John, John Paul, I think. Okay, John, John Paul. Paul. So you smash it into John Paul, and it glops over its head. And it actually burns. It like screams. It's just like sucking no. <laughs> Roll one d six plus two for damage. Salt and sweet. Six plus two. The cooling effects of dill. I tell you, uh, that'll be a five. A five. Okay. Five dairy damage. So its head <laughs> just sort of flops over and crumbles off, and the rest of it just smashes into the ground. Nice. So there are now two left. <laughs> Uh, and, Jenna uh, says, oh, snap. Robert <laughs> 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 and John are still in play here as we go the order. The ginger snaps are still on the attack. Um, Jimmy is attacking Ula. Oh, no, Ula. Makes a strike and just, your, your AC is 13, rolled a 12. So you basically... Uh -huh. 
like matrix, you know, side. <laughs> Just the, so side. the best. Uh, nice. All right. <laughs> Uh, and then the other one is attacking now at uh, Jeno because you just killed John Paul. <clears throat> so John takes a sweep out at you and hits you for two damage. Wait, what did he get on his attack roll? Um, he got a seventeen. Oh, rats! And no that one in the party, hits me. Yeah, no one in the party has higher than a fifteen, so I know it hits you. So. Boo! All right. So you said I took two damage? Yep, two damage. How okay, dare Ula, you? it's your turn. Ula, um, so who's close to me? How many of them Robert are close to me? is still. Robert's like in front of me. Yep, um, yep. I'm going to pull the flask of holy water out of my pack okay. and douse him with it. Amazing. So you're going to turn it and just sort of douse him with it? Go for it. Roll with advantage. <laughs> okay, wait. What do I What do I roll? Uh, so you're going to roll oh. a d20 twice? Just a regular d20. Okay. So go on gotcha. the side there where you can call yep, it. Yeah, I got it. Got it. Rolling d20s. Roll. Soggy cookies. Soggy cookies. They crumble. And quickly. the first roll is a 15. 15 is already a hit. And that then the if you get that crit. Second roll. Crescent roll uh, is a three. <laughs> Thankfully, right. the That's a hit. good enough. So uh, you hit it with the holy uh, water. Holy water. One D, so roll one d six. Tell us the total. Okay, hold on. One d. I can't count. Okay, d six. No problem. Da, 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 da. It is a six. Plus two oh, is eight. eight. So you sog it, like you just dump the water on it and it flows right down the middle and it gets that muddy mushiness in the middle of the cookie and oh, then no. it splits apart. Oh, oh, and, it, and I kiss it and I go, take that! That's the way fall? the cookie crumbles! <laughs> oh my God. Oh, it's so obvious. Oh, God. So there's only one ginger snap left. John, uh, Keggy, it's your turn. Snap to it, Keggy! <laughs> Yes. Holy crap. I don't have any more yogurt, so I'm going to use my hand axe and go after him with that. Go for it. <laughs> oh, I, I, I got him with the 21. Oh, my gosh. Oh, he pulls out the big, nice. the big sack. What's the damage, sir? And the damage is a seven. Okay, so you actually bring the axe across and just shatter one of the arms off the ginger snap and then bring it back around with the flat of it and just break its head in half. Black Arm and off. hammer. Awesome. awesome. You're a cheat. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last of the, the, literally the last of the cookie crumbles and it <laughs> against the ground and you hear that sort of, uh, uh, you know, the powdery sound of it spreading out over the, the rocks. Like, no, it went under the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> For a moment, there's silence. You'll have lunch. <laughs> and then you hear the voice again. Oh, oh, you nasty, nasty cooks. What, <laughs> what foulness, <laughs> what filth, what taste you bring here and you can feel this presence enter the room enter the cave you oh, can't man. see it but it's like the air is a little bit thicker a little bit darker a little bit nastier there's so much bitterness in the air bitterness in your heart mm. and it says to you give me one reason why I don't take you down to the darkness forever. Tell me one thing worth saving your life for. Well, I make a really good poutine. <laughs> I've made this lavender gravy. It's, it's light in the mouth and, you know, it'll actually good for you. It doesn't have any cardiovascular functions. <laughs> okay, I need you to make a constitution check. <laughs> All, all, all of us? No, no, just Keggy. He spoke up first. 
Nine. <laughs> okay. So you feel this intense, nasty bitterness sort of go down inside of you. And you're like, you will never, ever be accepted by the dwarves again. You know it. You feel it. Oh. You also take two damage. That's so sad. It's, also like a, it's, it's, it's a lie, Peggy. Okay, don't listen to it. Who's that cooking that nasty food? <laughs> nasty boys. Nasty boys. <laughs> Thanks, Sherry. <laughs> uh, can, do do we, can we sense that he's been traumatized emotionally? As yeah, well? you actually feel him kind of double over <laughs> from the... From, uh, this sudden sort of surge of bitterness from within. You hit me with your best shot. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jenna? I, I like, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, you go first. I would like to toss him from out of my my pocket the like, melodious mint that I have. I have melodious mints, which will, will raise his spirits if, if he can catch it and, and put it in his mouth. Are you talking about Keggy? Yeah, to Keggy, if I if I can toss it to him. So you, so you take this mint out yes. and you and you throw it over, and as soon as it hits the air, you hear this hiss. <gasps> sweetness. <laughs> Such oh, right, right. Foul sweetness. I think it's susceptible to sugar. <sighs> Quick, hey. throw something sweet at it. Like a kitten. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm bad, Jen. All right, what's next in the order? Who wants uh, to go next? So Jeno um, is going to clear his throat and uh, going to activate his uh, street urchin powers of making people feel really, really sorry for him. So he's going to put on the most yes. saccharine uh saccharin sweet face he can think of okay you don't know that you didn't know that someone's eyes could be so big and that a child could look so hungry and sad but that is exactly what it does and this being hasn't named itself right the witch mm. this being has not given itself a name right it is the darkest chocolate okay and it says gee mr chocolate i i just you know growing up alone hungry as an orphan on the streets all i really wanted was just a little bit of pie just to get me to the next day as my stomach devoured itself from the inside and my friends got gangrene and leprosy. And what's the thing where you don't have any citrus? Because we didn't have anything fresh to eat. We didn't have fruits. We didn't have vitamin C. And I would just, it would, scurvy, yes, thank you, whoever said that. And it would, it would just mean the world to me if you would just let us take the recipe for the pie and go home. Oh, such sweetness. <laughs> so I want you to make a, um, <laughs> a either what, whatever your kind of highest is on this deception, I guess, is appropriate or, yeah. or persuasion. They with, are evenly matched, in fact. With advantage. Okay. Let us know what you get. That was an 18. Oh, ho, ho, I critted. Yeah. Nice. I got a natural 20. All right. So it goes, no, no, the sweetness is too great. This cute, such sweet things you have existed in, and I cannot take my bitterness here. The whole cave starts to shake. No more pies. No more desserts, no more cookies or glorious chocolate with sugar. I wish you nothing but really, really nothing you had as a child. Really? <laughs> Cutie <laughs> eyes. I'm really underweight for my age. A little bit of ice cream, maybe some caramel, maybe a. No! No, only bit of. God, no! And then suddenly. As the ground shakes and splits asunder, you feel that presence get sucked deep down into the mocha and pulled away from Ula as well. Shadow <gasps> and hung upon her all these years. Oh, a weight has been lifted. And then <laughs> last, 
you feel the sudden tinkle on the ground of of a powder again, but this isn't salt. It's sugar. It's a pure, pure sugar waiting there to be blessed upon your future dishes and desserts. Are you talking raw sugar or is it that really highly refined sugar? <laughs> this I mean, is the sugar rock like candy mountain. This is the rock stuff. We can make whatever we want with it. Let's go right into the weeds, Keggy. Last but not least, you suddenly see a small scroll tube appear in midair, glowing. And then it falls and sits in the middle of that little ring of sugar, waiting to be picked up, taken. Sweet. Literally. Hey, hands. <laughs> hey oh. I, would like to make a, I would like to make a dive for it. Nice. <laughs> With my acrobatics. Teely flips and grabs and holds it up in the air triumphantly and no! there's a I have this uh, the break, is ours. that breaks the darkness and you see now the cave maybe maybe not so dark maybe not so scary after all and a bit of sunlight peeking in through the cave you didn't actually go that far it was all just a little scary bitter dream in your minds once you entered the mocha mountain and that my friends is our wondrous adventure called The Yeast You Could Do? <laughs> Yay! Yay! Huzzah! 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 You have enjoyed yourselves Excellent. here on this uh, culinary adventure. Thank you so much for joining us here on Wizards and Wordsmiths, our little D&D &D session. Uh, it's uh, always a fun experience to play with new people and kind of show you what's possible in Dungeons & Dragons. My name is Jim Zub. I'm a comic book writer, probably known best for my sword and sorcery writing, including writing Conan the Barbarian at Marvel and the official Dungeons and Dragons comic for IDW. Uh, my newest uh, book is a series called the Dungeons and Dragons Young Adventurers Guides. And we bring new players into the hobby, showing them all the fun and creativity you can have in your own Dungeons and Dragons adventures. And I am Kevin Hearn. I'm the author of the Iron Druid Chronicles, an urban fantasy series. And then we also uh, have written an epic fantasy uh, called The Seven Kennings. And I co-authored The Tales of Hell with Delilah S. Dawson. And my brand new series, Ink and Sigil, is coming out on August 25th, very shortly. And that is also urban fantasy set in Scotland and Philadelphia. So I uh, hope you guys will give that a shot. Hi, I'm Adib Karam. I'm the author of Darius the Great is Not Okay and Darius the Great Deserves Better, uh, which ironically also drops August 25th. And uh, I also wrote a picture book, Seven Special Somethings in Oru Story, which comes out in February of 2021. Awesome. Hi, I'm Andrea Robertson. I'm the author of the new fantasy series Forged in Fire and Stars. Sorry, I'm moving, so I only have, <laughs> have a little image. It's a sad image, but it's a cool cover. <laughs> I'm also uh, the author of uh, the Nightshade series and Invisibility with David Levithan. And I'm Sherielle Smith, and I am the author of my latest book is The Blossom and the Firefly, which is Sorry, I lost focus there. I'm a little scattered today. Um, which is a World War II kamikaze love story. Um, I write comics. My latest Ooh. trade is the Avatar Sute's Path trade from Dark Horse. Um, I also have a historical fantasy based on the Nutcracker called The Toymaker's Apprentice and a speculative cli-fi book called Orleans about a future post-disaster New Orleans. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, I'm David Yoon, and I wrote um, Frankly in Love, which is a young adult novel that came out in September. Uh, and my next book is called Super Fake Love Song, and that comes out in November of this year, November 17th, uh, after the election. And I also have an adult thriller about the internet, and it's called Version Zero, and that's coming out in January 2021. Sweet. So as you can see, lots of amazing material for you to check out. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you enjoyed the story that we built and our crazy kind of cooking adventure, make sure to let us know on Twitter or social media and share it with your friends. Otherwise, take care of yourselves, stay safe, and read lots of books. <laughs>